Hi everyone, I'm Alexandra Amore and I'm here today with Joel Mark Harris. Hi Joel. Hello, how are you? Very well, how are you? Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. My pleasure. It's nice to have another Vancouver writer on the yes, show. Yeah. That's pretty exciting. I've had writers from Thailand so far, uh, the Eastern oh, wow. United States, the UK, so finally yeah. someone from my hometown. <laughs> So by way of an introduction, I'll just let everyone know, uh, Joel Mark Harris is an award-winning, sorry, an award-nominated journalist, novelist, screenwriter, and producer. Born in Vancouver, British Columbia, he graduated from the Langara Journalism School in 2007. After working various jobs in the journalism and PR fields, Harris wrote and produced the award-winning feature-length film, Neutral Territory, which we'll have to talk about. I'd love to know more about that. Joel is also the author of the John Webster mystery thriller series of books, which is primarily what we're here to talk about today. So tell us a little bit about John, uh, Joel. He's a, he's an investigative journalist, and he's he back from the war in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. So he comes from way back when I was in school, and some of my teachers had some really fascinating stories about times when they're in the field, and... Uh, there's no one in Afghanistan, but uh, some of them had been to Iraq, and some of them been into you know uh, conflict zones like Africa. And I just loved those stories, and I thought they were super fascinating. So John really came out of those stories. He um, he comes back from Afghanistan, and he suffers um, from you know from all that war and. Uh, all the the trauma that he experienced over there and so he tries to fit back into normal life into you know Vancouver and he has a really tough time he uh, copes with alcohol and uh, he doesn't really sleep but uh, he does the one thing that he's really good at and that is investigating you know crime or cover-ups or anything that um, is suspicious to him Mm, okay, yeah, and in in the first book, I think he's in, he's investigating. Um, oh no, I was going to say a sniper, but that's one of the later ones. That's yeah, that's the um, that's called the Tiger Always Eats Last, and that's my most recent book. The first one is called The Thousand Bayonets. All my titles uh, they come from some quotes about journalism. Uh, oh, so cool. A Thousand Bayonets is from a Napoleon quote that says he fears four hostile newspapers more than a thousand bayonets okay. and that one is about a he investigates these gangsters um who are basically running the city and you know running drugs and i took that from basically the headlines when i wrote it that was one of our major issues in vancouver and i mean it still is today but it doesn't seem to be as prevalent in the newspapers or in you know the, the news stories right now so mm -hmm. that was that one Mm, okay. And so you you obviously take a lot of your journalism background and bring that into the story. Um, yeah. And how much does research play a role in what you write? So generally the idea comes to me. Um, it would be like different pieces from different, you know, um, areas of my life. A lot of it can be from, uh, from newspapers or from stories I read and then some of it is some of the fiction. And then, so I take that, and then that's sort of when the the research comes into play. And so for my latest book, I didn't really know much about uh, snipers. So I did a lot of research about snipers and sort of, you know, the weather conditions that they, they have to, you know, shoot through and sort of some of the history for the snipers and learned about sort of the longest shot somebody's made and uh, also, you know, DNA plays a part in the story. So I did some research on DNA and I found, you know, I talked to people in the field, I talked to other writers and kind of accumulated my knowledge through that. Oh, cool. Awesome. Yeah, research is one of my favorite things to do. And, yeah. Yeah, and learning, you know, just interesting things about something you had never had any idea about is always yeah. one of the yeah most fun parts of my job, I think. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so Vancouver is the setting for your novels. John lives yeah. here. Mm -hmm. um, and 
I guess my I have two a twofold question. So one is sure. sort of what kind of a role does Vancouver play in the story, and have you learned anything interesting about the city that you didn't know uh, before you started Great writing question. the books? So, uh, if I was, so there's two stories, two novels that um, Vancouver plays a role in. The other two novels, there's Calgary and then Toronto. Okay. So each of the stories, uh, the city, I, I love cities. And so the city plays a large part in each of the novels. Yeah. And for Vancouver specifically, I find that the rain and the, the mood uh, plays a lot, uh, a big part in the story. And so uh, I guess, for example, my, my last book, it's always raining, so it's always cloudy and and thundery, and so that that really sets the mood for me, and it sets the tone of the book, and so that that really played a big part in in my latest novel, mm -hmm. for the first one, a thousand bayonets. The there's more of places, um, gas town, you know, sort of. The older parts of the city really inspired me. Just, um, I think, it, partly because of the film noir aspect of the books, and uh, hopefully we we can talk. I guess we're going to talk about this later. But if we if we turn into a film, then that will also play a big part. But I guess the visual aspects of the city, uh, the older buildings, definitely play a big part. Mm -hmm. I think. Um, to answer your second question, the part that um, really played a big part was uh, Blood Alley. I don't know if you're aware of the um, the history behind that, but there's a lot of folklore lore with that. It's a little, it's a very little alley and very insignificant, but it's called Blood Alley. And, okay, yeah, I've heard of it. But... Yeah, so there's several... Um, I guess several stories of how it came to be named Blood Alley. One is it used to be the place where they hung criminals. Oh, okay. And there's another one where there used to be a lot of butcher shops, and so there'd be a lot of slaughtering of the I think of cows, and the blood would actually run down the alley. So um, I don't know. It was just like stuff, little stuff like that that I learned about the city. And I found that I was really fascinated by then. I mean, it doesn't really play a huge part in the novel, but a little sidebar, if you will. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I think, too, as, as authors, just kind of having that information kind of running through our veins is a really nice way to bring texture and, and character For to sure. a novel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I felt that it, it really fit in with the with the film noir aspect and John Webster as a character as well. Yes, yeah. So I referred to the books as mystery thrillers in the mm -hmm. intro. You Would you consider them more noir novels or...? Yeah. yeah. Um, they're kind of a bit, of a bit of both, I would say. They definitely have, um, you know, aspects of each. Uh, definitely some mystery, thriller, suspense, sort of all thrown... Into, into one book, so to speak. Yeah, 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 exactly. And then kind of the noir element comes in, I guess, in John Webster's character. He, yeah. He, he's a troubled guy. Yeah. Uh, with a difficult past. And is he dealing with PTSD? Yes. Okay. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, he's has trouble speaking, uh, speaking, has trouble sleeping and mm. um, ins has insomnia. And, you know, he the only way he can cure that is by getting drunk and um you know falling asleep and you know passing out basically yeah. okay yeah yeah wow um and so what was the catalyst for writing these books had you wanted you started you went to journalism school yeah um had you always been attracted to writing fiction oh there's phantom there's phantom yeah <laughs> <laughs> so i um <laughs> oh see he's gonna yeah. <laughs> Just pass by. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, I went to journalism school uh, because I thought it was a way I could make uh, a living as a writer um, and not... 
I, I knew fiction was really difficult to make a living with, and so I was like, okay, I'm going to do what I really love, and, which is writing, and apply it to the real world. Mm. And, I mean, if I had thought about it <laughs> a little longer, I perhaps would have realized that the world is kind of shifting away from the old school model of newspapers and subscriptions, and it's you know, we're in the transition mode that it's really hard to to get a job as a journalist. You can, I mean, you can do freelancing, but even freelancing doesn't pay like it used to. So, you know, I did, I did journalism for a while and, you know, I loved it. I worked for a couple newspapers when I graduated, but I was like, you know what, if it's going to be, you know, this is as hard as as making a living writing fiction. So I was like, you know, screw it. I'm just going to do what I really love, which is writing novels. I, you know, it's something I've wanted to do ever since I was, you know, I could remember basically. Okay. So, but kind of, I, th I think when I went to journalism school, it sort of, it opened up a whole new world for me that I didn't even realize existed. And that was, you know, how important journalism and and newspapers and, um, you know, every, like, knowledge, I guess, really is what it comes down to, is for people to have. And I think a lot of people, they take it for granted, especially in the Western world. And I found it, you know, it, people think that journalism is dying, and obviously it's not that it's just transitioning. And I really thought that it's, it was very interesting. And I don't think a lot of people realize this, that, you know, journalism still has a huge impact on us. The whole um, Syrian refugee crisis, the fact that, you know, all these countries are taking in, you know, these refugees happened because of one photograph of a little boy mm -hmm. who had died while trying to escape Syria. Mm -hmm. And so it still has a big impact on us. And so I want to be able to communicate that through my fiction, you know, mm -hmm. and show that to, to other people that, you know, journalism still really matters. I'm not sure if I really answered your question there, but... No, uh, that was that great. Sort of, yeah, it sort of it did it did really impact me with my journalism degree. Yeah, and even though it may be a little bit of a blip on you know my fiction radar, it's it really did impact um, the the way I write and what I write about. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that is so cool! I actually got chills when you were talking about it. That's a cool. really yeah, really neat kind of. Um, I don't know if you would call it a moral background, but a, a deeply held value yeah. that informs your, your writing. Mm -hmm. I think, just to get back to the fiction, John Webster, he believes in what he's doing. Mm -hmm. He believes it has value. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, he's very jaded about society, about life, that he, he tries to kind of swim through oh, all that muck and get to sort of the truth and what he's really good at. Mm, which is exposing the truth about... Exactly, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, got it. And um, does he struggle to keep a job as well? He works for a fictional newspaper here in Vancouver. Yeah. Yes, he... Um, there's several pressures on him. One is obviously the financial side of newspapers uh, going out of business and not making as much money. And of course then... He's he's a bit of a decorated journalist, so he's won some awards. He's obviously held in high regards in some factions of the newspaper. Mm -hmm. But then he's, in other factions, he's, he's mistrusted and people, there he, there's some jealousy and he's not very punctual, so... Um, he does have trouble holding down, you know, that nine to five job as well. So yeah. that, yeah, he has kind of two forces that are against him. Mm, okay. Yeah. So 
meaning um, his character. Exactly. And then the the economic realities of journalism. Yes. yes. Exactly. That's okay. well put. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Um, I get just getting back to Vancouver as a setting. I noticed one of your reviewers said they had never been to Vancouver, but they felt like they had uh, after they read your book. I thought that was a pretty cool thing to say about a, a, a stories that are location focused. I, I get that a lot actually, and, mm -hmm. and it goes back to the fact that my my cities or you know my the settings do play a big part of mm -hmm. um, do play play a big part in the in the story and whether it's you know the mood or you know I really try to you know some some places um are fictional but usually I will I will pick a place that is actually uh, is actually there and so you know like if it's a coffee shop or you know some sort of building um, I try to um make it make it as real as possible and make it stand out for the the reader as mm -hmm. well you know sometimes you know sort of my in my latest book i um have a um a tower that is um that is not actually in part of vancouver but it plays a pivotal role in the story and i won't give too much away but you know it's 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 not there it's not a real place because just because of the storyline. So there's part of that and, and part of, you know, trying to ground everything in reality. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I totally get that. And so let's touch briefly on film. Um, okay. And so, yeah, tell me whatever you want actually <laughs> about, uh, about your work in films and production and, um, yeah, and possi the possibility of your novels going into film. Sure. So, again, I sort of, I mean, I have, it's been kind of crazy, but I never, I always wanted to write screenplays and get into film a little bit, but then I, I met a director and producer just by chance. We were playing soccer together, and he's like, oh, I need a writer for a film that I'm producing. And so I sent him some of my stuff, and he liked it, and we got along really well. Mm hmm and so we went in and he has a production company called Counting Ants and so we we basically collaborated together on a um yeah the film called Neutral Territory and it's based on the director's life uh, with again a little bit of fictional elements um thrown in there mm -hmm. but it's about an immigrant who comes from switzerland he immigrates to north america he has a falling out with his dad he moves to a big city becomes this big shot lawyer uh, gets engaged and then his father falls sick and he has to move back and take care of him and so the story is really about him reconnecting with his with his father and so you know it's a family drama it's it's a really universal theme. Mm -hmm. It's something I haven't really touched on in my fiction writing, but I think it, I think it works better as a screenplay. And so through him, you know, we sort of had to, we've, through the years, we've tried to get some projects off the ground. And, you know, film is, is a, you know, it's even harder than, you know, making money from from books. Yeah. To uh, to make a living as a screenplay writer, or you know, or producer, especially if you want to do your own your own things and have you know some semblance of control over your work. Yeah. But so over the past, you know, he, you know when my, you know, he's been a great supporter of my work. So when my when a thousand bayonets came out he was you know one of the first people to, to buy a copy and even though he's not much of a reader he you know he read the entire thing and I think he connected too with this the very visual aspects mm. of the story and he could really see the city as well and and see how it looked you know in his mind he was like oh this will be a great film so I uh, worked on several drafts 
of the of my book into a screenplay, and so and then went through yeah, um, you know, sent it off to several people, and we got some feedback. And one of the one of the things they said was it's too Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, we're we're sending it to more to you know like the uh, CBC people, m- you know, more Canadian producers. So they um, they they have like smaller smaller budgets, and they couldn't, you know, they wouldn't be able to sort of visualize and turn this into this the film that that we thought it could be. And so just over the years, we've been kind of tinkering with that. And then we teamed up with another producer, actually. And he was like, no, this would be a great um, great TV series. Mm-hmm. And, you know, sort of over the time, I feel like uh, the, you know, the Hollywood studios are going away from, you know, those those movies they're taking less chances on, you know, smaller independent um, films and just, you know, kind of rehashing the the X-Men and all the superhero movies. Yeah. And so even, you know, my movie watching tastes have changed and they have, you know, I've been watching more series and so I, I feel like a lot more of the the better writing and the better even like the better producing is in you know netflix and television series these days so you sort of shift gears over the last year and and looking at turning into more of a of a tv series and what i mean i sort of i guess the my biggest influence in the past a little bit has been breaking bad so we thought Okay, so we have this character, John Webster, and he's jaded, he's bitter, he's, you know, emotionally damaged. What was like he what was he like before that when he just when he was like a new journalist? And so we went back in time and started with John Webster as as a fresh young face. Wow. And so what we hope to do is take young John Webster and then through the series have him progress into the journalist he is today which I think is a it's a super interesting transition yeah and um it's a great place to take a character so we've been working on that for a little I guess about six months now and just working on the marketing package we've got we we filmed a a trailer and that was the trailer that we sent out sort of to the CBC people and the, the local producers and that so they they thought that was too Hollywood, and so we're what we've done now is we've simplified it and really kind of ramped up the quality of of the piece of the trailer, mm-hmm. and we're gonna uh, combine that with a marketing package and s- so send that out to you know the Netflix people, the Amazon people, and hopefully we'll get a bite. Oh, nice! Wow, that's a- incredibly <laughs> exciting. And so the thing that strikes me is that I realized that I didn't think that any, you know, any old person, any old author could do that. Yeah. But you're essentially pitching them this idea, mm-hmm. um, kind of a, a cold, essentially. Yeah. I think that it helps to have, because I'm not in the industry day to day, whereas my producing partners are. Right. And so they bring, you know, some very valuable experience they know what is selling. They they know what doesn't work. What what um, who likes what, and so yeah. that really helps. Whereas my head is more like focused to the, the writing aspects. They bring in like such great knowledge, and so I would say that if is anyone out there who who wants to follow this path is to, to really team up to with people with. Um, you know, A plus players, people who are in the industry who know uh, what's you know the ins and outs of it. Because mm-hmm. you know, it, I, it's I don't. It's a bit cliche to say you know it's who you know, but that is true for a lot of it. And being able to 
to have those relationships is really key. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so well said. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that is fascinating. Well, this has been amazing, Joel. Thank you so much for talking to me. And so uh, tell people where they can find your books online. Sure. So obviously you can go, you know, Amazon, Kobo, um, Smashwords, all those regular places that you buy books. Um, it's in chapters, Barnes and Nobles. Uh, if you want to find out more about me, you can go to joelmarkharris.com uh, or tweet me at joelmarkharris. Perfect. Oh, that's fantastic. And I noticed, too, you have a box set as well with the first three John Webster books on for a great deal, like six yeah. six ninety nine or something. I think so, yeah. Yeah, for the first three novels. That's awesome. All right. Well, thanks again so much, and uh, take care. Yeah, thank you so much. You're thanks welcome. for having me again. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.